Hey, good time of the morning to you, whosoever. Today's is Book of Revelation, chapter three. Uh, I'm gonna try to try to do a, a couple things concerning the Book of Revelation. It might encourage people. Plus, there'll be up there resources um, for as the end times gain speed. So, uh, Revelation chapter three says, uh, "This is a message uh, to the churches that are." Um, throughout uh, Asia Minor, and again, the reason why the Lord does this is, I believe, what I was taught in the school of ministry that that uh, you know the church ages or the, you know the seven churches are really like seven. Uh, how you know there's the last church, which is the church of Thyatira, I think, which is basically a church that it, it basically is going to be around when the rapture happens. So chapter 3 says, And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things has he that hath seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, and thy hast a name that liveth but are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know the hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Verse 5. He that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white remnant, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Again, one thing we learn in the in the in the Bible is that God is telling the church here, um, you know, you have a name that's you're alive, but you're you're dead. Um, many people serve the Lord, um, but they haven't been born again. They they don't have the Holy Spirit living in them. Also, the, he says here, I have heard your works, but I have not found them um, perfect before God. Um, also, he, he encouraged them to be careful because you might die. Uh, you're, you know, you're dying spiritually. I mean, that's a great exhortation to all of us. Um, when we stop following the Lord and, and, and go in the flesh, you know, the flesh starts taking over. We react. Uh, but I hear that God is telling them, the church, to be careful. Um, but there's a few people who are worthy, you know, and have walked and clothed. Uh, again, he that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white remnant. It talks about the righteousness of God. Also, uh, thou, thou hast few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white remnant, and I will not blot out his name uh, from the book of life. So the Bible here tells us that there's a book of life. And, and when you're born again and you receive Jesus Christ, he's not going to blot you out, uh, you know. Because remember, it is God who justifies the sinner. And if, if it's God who justifies it, you, then he is able to sustain you. Uh, remember the same blood that uh, gave you the atonement the day you were born again is the same blood that keeps you saved. Um, and you shall walk in white garments or worthy. You know, that's what we all need, guys. Being born again. Being born in this world, being born in this world, spiritually dead in, in Adam. When we're born again, we, be, we, we move to become in Christ. You know, again, as we, the book of Revelation is not just talking about the end of uh, the seven year tribulation or the, the, the horrors and the chaos that is going to come upon the whole world, but it's also talking about the end of the church age. To the seven churches of the seven stars, you know, God. Uh, the next one we'll talk about is the Church of Philadelphia. How, you know, they're faithful to preach the word. You know, uh, though they have a little strength, you know, their little strength is more powerful than than the, the biggest uh, conglomerates of of churchianity. Uh, without the 
the moving of the Holy Spirit. So, to the seven churches with the seven stars, you know, we taught about that many years ago at the Salinas. We talked about the seven uh, stages, the book of Sardis, you know. Um, talks about a church age. Uh, that, that said that were very much alive, but they weren't. You know, they had Jesus, Jesus seen the faults and he tells them to repent. Um, he also says, walk worthy. Uh, of, of you know having a, a remnant that's faithful. Uh, so what are they faithful to? They're not obviously you know it's not being faithful to the, the the church of Sardis, but the but the Lord. You know, guys, you got to be careful that you find yourself you know being more faithful to your local church than the Lord, because the Lord is the body of Christ. You're in Christ. Sometimes we might find ourselves, uh, you know, being more loyal to the traditions of man than, than, than the Lord, you know. And if I tell you that there's no power in going through saints or going through Mary or going through uh, um, angels or any other, you know. And then he says in the, in, in the scripture we read that I will confess you before my father and his angels. Uh, again... I always thought that was kind of funny that you know, God doesn't, Jesus doesn't take claim of the, of the army of angels. You know, He says that those are, those belong to my Father. And again, um, angels were were uh, angels were made way before humans. We don't know how much how long, longer, but we know the angels were made before humans. And we know that Lucifer was the chief angel that held worship to God the Father and at some point you know it says you know he sinned in his heart he wanted to be like God or he wanted the worship you know he wanted the praise he wanted the um, he wanted the, uh, the the chocolates he wanted the chocolates so uh, and because of that he fell and the Bible says one third of the angels fell with him and you know, he was here on earth when God made Adam and Eve and, you know, he allowed the devil to tempt Adam and really tempt Eve. Um, but God had a plan behind it. God has a plan be behind the scenes. God has a plan in your life. You know, God has a plan for your family, for your children, for your, uh, you know, he says to the church, uh, the book of, uh, the, of Sardis, you know, what was kind of cool about the name, uh, I mean, the name, not the name, but, the, but, but what, how God preaches his word is that he, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle John gave these uh, ministry uh, to, um, you know, to, to the seven churches that are in Asia Minor. But in reality, they were uh, also speaking into uh, time. Uh, we're a church of Sardis, which means something, and I don't remember. Um, the church of Sardis would be around, um, but like God says to all the churches, you know, if you don't represent me, uh, I'm going to take away your lampstand. You know, and that's what's really happening today is a lot of uh, people who testify of Jesus Christ, you know, to preach him. Um, differently than what the Bible teaches them. And, that, and, you know, and, and then they add a lot of the traditions of men. And God says, hey, you know, repent. You, know, you, don't, you don't want to be um, following God according to the traditions of men. And you have no relationship with God, but you have relationship with uh, uh, the traditions. You have relationship with the priest or the pastor. Um, but you don't really have a relationship with the Lord. You know, many times I remember... Um, helping, you know, pastors, and, and, and you know, a lot of times their congregants would come to them. When they, like many times, you know, he even believed that they should be going to the Lord for whatever issue they were going to. You know, and, they, and then you basically make uh, your pastor, your priest, your intercessor. You know, you want to be able to go boldly before the throne room of grace and speak to the Lord. You know, and the Lord speaks back. I'm telling you. 
you know, he tells us, hey, let it, I, don't let me blot you out of the book of life. You know, that should be a warning. You know, he says, I will not blot you. But there's people who are going to be blotted out of the book of life because they never received Jesus Christ. They never were born again. They never uh, spent uh, time, you know, they, they, they made a lot of money and a lot of properties, but they took nothing with them. And, you know, and then they, the Bible says that they will appear before God at the white throne judgment. The white throne judgment is where you don't want to be. Another thing about the white throne judgment, can you imagine coming before God in purity? No one makes it. You know, no one makes it. And, all, and, then, and then you're cast into the lake of fire. Jesus says very clearly in the Bible, you know, why would you go to hell? It wasn't made for man. It was made for the devil and his angels. You know, the devils and his angels haven't even been in hell yet. You know? He's, the devil's not in hell ruling and reigning, you know, from hell. He's on earth. The Bible says that Satan is the god of this world. Deceiving. And his ministers, ministers of righteousness... Deceive mankind, deceive the inhabitants of the earth. Good morning, Dana. They deceive the inhabitants of the earth. Now, every born again believer has the word of God and has a sword to be able to, uh, you know, the gospel is the good news. But also, we need to uh, we need to contend for the faith. Many people don't contend for the faith. You know, you're good over there. I'm good over here. And, you know, really nothing comes of it. You know, how easily it would be to, to tell somebody, hey, there's no power. There's no power in your traditions. There's no power in your statues. There's no power in your religion. There's no power in your good works. There's no power in, uh, when it comes to salvation, you know, there's no power other than the power of God coming and living and dwelling within you when you're born again. You become a child of God. You know, I remember very clearly when I was born again, God took care of me. Every need I had, he took care of me. Every discouragement, he, he, he opened, I opened up the Bible and he would encourage me, you know. Every time I wanted to, you know, get my way or, uh, you know, retaliate, God says, you know, vengeance is mine, trust me. You know, sometimes, you know, the Lord would say, shut up. You don't need to contend for yourself. Watch me do it for you. You know, many times I went before the court and I found myself, without even saying a word, the, the, the case was thrown out. Because God, again, who's a, the, 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 the legal owner of this earth, is able to do abundantly above what you believe and think for. He's he's on your side. He gets he gets your uh, he has you on his mind. He loves you. You might find yourself going through a trial, a tribulation, a sickness. You know, you might find yourself. You know, on your deathbed, or you might find yourself, I have cancer, or, you know, you know, we're all, at some point, we're all going to go. We're all going to go. You know? And because of, you know, our mortality, you know, there's a very, very, very uh, much we can trust the Lord. We can trust the Lord, and no matter what you do, you can trust the Lord in all your discouragements. And again, you can trust the Lord um, as uh, end times gain speed and, and the world be, again, um, following the, the, the broad road. As the Bible says, there's a broad road that everybody's going to follow. You know? And the Bible says that that broad road will bring in destruction. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to uh, trust in a false religion. I don't even want you to trust in, the, in your church or in, in your thing. I want you to trust the Word of God and, and have the Lord lead you where we, He would have you. You know, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, there's no, uh, uh, there's no better life than a, than, a, than a Christian that submits to the Lord and prays and and trusts His omnipresence and omnipotence because in, in the end. Uh, you're not alone. You have God. You have the you have the Maker of heaven and earth helping you, encouraging you, strengthening you. Uh, I, again, God bless you. I love you. In the nombre de Jesucristo, the name above all names. Amen. Trust the Lord, carnal.
you gonna do? What you gonna do when the end times come for you? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna be a light? Are you gonna be a salt? Or are you gonna be a mocker? You don't wanna be a mocker, bro. Muckers really don't end well. Or a scoffer. Scoffers don't end well in the Bible. They don't end well. And uh, who knows? You might be uh, uh, one of the two witnesses God uses. Might be not the ones in the Bible that go against the saint, Satan and the Antichrist and the false prophet, but it could be a witness that testifies of the, God's great plan in your life. The fact that you need to be born again and the fact that you need to be saved. In the nombre de Jesucristo.